What's up everybody and welcome back to another edition of The Dig, a series dedicated to helping you improve profitability on your farm. I'm Aaron, this is Colin, let's dig in! You guys have heard us talk about spray drones for a few years now in PFR, but this year we were able to do more testing than ever before on them. Five studies on corn and four on beans, totaling nine different trials valuing drones and their effectiveness. You know, Aaron, I don't think there's anyone doing this much research on drones. I'm not sure to be honest with you, but I do know we are focusing a lot of time and effort on this topic right now in order to correctly evaluate them for the farmers. Like Aaron mentioned, we've been looking at this stuff for a few years now, but this is the first year we've actually had significant disease pressure at some of these sites with these studies. That being said, we were excited to get the data this year and see if the trends that we've been seeing the last few years would continue. What kind of trends are you talking about? Well, the trend seems to be that drone is just as effective as an airplane or a ground rig, and in some cases, even more effective at applying fungicides. We still need more years of research though, before we can say for sure. We've got a handful of studies to cover today on this episode, but I really think this first one should probably address the elephant in the room. Is the drone as good or better than a ground rig? Well, after two years of testing this with corn on the PFR sites, we're showing about a $10 advantage to using drones over that ground rig. Now, what you're seeing on the screen is our multi-year, multi-location data. Now, when we start looking at the individual site data though, you can see that that trend is pretty consistent on three out of five locations. Southern Illinois, Central Illinois, and Kentucky all see much better responses with drone. Ohio and Indiana though, it's a little bit of a different story. Last year, Ohio had about a $2 advantage to the ground rig, but this year it was slightly higher, making that spread a little bit larger. Last year in Indiana, we had an almost $20 advantage to the drone, but much like Ohio, we saw a greater return with the ground rig this year. Now we did have some pretty significant tar spot pressure in this study in Indiana this year, so that may be what's driving it. With that being said, we still achieved great ROIs with either application method this year here in Indiana. Another thing we're doing in PFR that I don't think anyone else is doing right now is comparing drones, ground rigs, airplanes, and helicopters in a field scale trial. The majority of these field scale trials were done in Illinois over the last two years. There are a couple different studies to look at in the book, so I wanna make sure that we look at them separately. The first one is the ground versus helicopter versus drone. Looking at this two-year data, you'll notice that the drones have given us the best ROI at $21, followed by the ground rig, and lastly, the helicopter. If we break down the sites that had this study, you'll see that fungicide paid big for us this year at the Iowa Cooperator site, no matter the application, but in Illinois, the drone was the only one to give us a positive return. In our ground versus plane versus drone study, again, the drone gave us the highest ROI between the three, after the two years of testing. You'll notice that we had four locations where we were able to perform this trial and the results were kind of mixed in 2024. We also performed two studies on soybeans this year, but saw ne neg negligible, saw ne negligible, that's gonna be hard for me to say. What's another word for negligible? I'm not gonna be able to say it. But we didn't see that much of a gain on yield in soybeans. We did see a slight advantage to the ground rig in the ground versus helicopter versus drone sites though. We look forward to continuing these field scale trials in the coming years as it is the most effective way for us to compare drones to the different aircraft applications. After seeing the data from not only the PFR plots, but from our field scale research, Aaron, what is our recommendation? I think at the end of the day, making timely fungicide applications should be the biggest focus. We all know that getting it applied at the right time can make or break that pass. Also, making sure we're using the right product should be a major focus as well. So, our recommendation is pretty simple. Use the application method that allows you to make a timely pass with the right product. Our research proves that any means of applying a fungicide is effective, and I think we need more years of research before we can say if one is truly better than the other. <coughs> <coughs> I, thought, I thought you were laughing no, at me I was at first. To hold in. <laughs> 
A new study for this year was our drone fungicide carrier rate study. And as the title implies, we looked at different carrier rates when applying fungicides in order to determine their impact on yield. We looked at two, two and a half, and three gallon to the acre rates. While the logistics of increasing carrier rates by 50% may not be practical for some custom applicators, we did see small yield increases when we increased to that three gallon rate. Looking at the corn data here, you'll notice that the three gallon rate was the only one able to recoup the cost of the fungicide for us this year. As we get more years of data, we will know what the trends are. But right now, it looks like the higher carrier rates increase the effectiveness of the fungicide, similar to the trends we're seeing on ground rigs. You'll notice we saw the same thing on soybeans as well. Although none of the applications were profitable in 2024, which is somewhat of a rarity for us, we saw a small response to the higher carrier rates. One thing to consider here is that some applicators may charge more for higher carrier rates, which could impact the ROI calculations. We get asked quite frequently what drones we utilize to perform this research. So I want to spend a little bit of time today discussing just that. For the vast majority of our studies at the PFR sites, we utilized a Helio AG116 spray drone. We were able to work with our own in-house drone specialist, Jim Love, to make those applications. We felt it was necessary to make sure that we made the applications to the best of our abilities, and using Jim ensured we had someone who was well-versed and trained in this area. For most of the field scale research, we utilized a Helio AG230 spray drone, manned by Clayton Stuffelbeam, our PFR agronomist. Clayton coordinates a lot of our on-farm research and has spent countless hours calibrating and learning the drone before taking it to the field to do these trials. Aaron, that was a lot of information in a short amount of time. I think we should probably do a brief recap. You know, I think that's a really good idea. Why don't you go ahead and do that? Perfect. At the end of the day, getting the right product applied at the right time should be the number one concern. Whichever method of application allows you to do that is one that we would recommend. We will continue to do this research in order to build an even more robust data set to give farmers the best advice we can. I think it's also important for us to point out that all of these studies are done in different geographies, different hybrids, different weather patterns, and a plethora of other factors explaining the varying results we see. Great points, Colin. Lastly, I think we need to make a recommendation to farmers that no matter which method of application you choose, make sure they're performed by someone that is experienced and trustworthy. When you're making an investment into your crop, you wanna make sure that it's done correctly and no corners are cut when it comes to coverage and rates. Using an experienced applicator that takes the time to calibrate their equipment is going to set you up for the most success. Be sure to check out the link in the description, take you to the website to see all of our PFR data, or check out some of the stuff in your PFR book. You should have them in your hands by now. Also drop us a comment below. We're curious, what are you guys using for fungicide applications on your own farm? And with that, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that little bell icon so you get notifications when future videos are released. And we will see you again on another episode of The, the Dig. Dig. Negligible. What's another word for negligible? I'm not gonna be able to say it. But so negligible, it's gonna sound weird. Okay. Oh yeah, you nailed it. But so negligible yield gains for any of these treatments on beans. Okay. Different weather patterns and, and, and a I hate when you use fancy words. And a plethora of other factors.